Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show how I made a complete game using Excel, the best game development platform in the world. So get ready, for an adventure with Bat Acrobat. In this thrilling game, you take on the role of a bat trapped in a cave. Using your expert acrobatic skills, you must navigate through the cave, avoiding obstacles and collecting points along the way. With intuitive controls and challenging levels, Bat Acrobat will keep you on the edge of your seat. Fly through the cave, dodging rocks and stalactites, and see how far you can go. Can you reach the end of the cave and escape to freedom? To find the answer, just keep watching. So instead of the classical game engines such as Unity and Unreal, I rather used Excel to make this game. And it's obvious why. Dealing with poor processing performance of demanding calculations, slow rendering, low FPS and a game resolution of only 100 by 60 pixels is a big challenge for any game developer. So I developed my own Excel game engine, and here is an Excel workbook template that contains it. Let's have a look. The template is consisted of several worksheets. The first one is the most important, because that's where the game is running. The following sheets are the scoreboard, game settings, display editor, sprite editor, and list of colors. The heart of the engine are three macro modules. The first one contains declarations of color constants, screen properties, virtual keys, sound constants, types of structures, and references to the external functions. The second module contains routines for managing the game, drawing graphics, handling sprites, displaying dialogues, playing sounds, and maintaining the scoreboard. The third module is intended for coding our game. Currently it only contains empty routines for creating, destroying, and updating the game. All these routines are called by the engine. Let's check it out by pressing the start game button. So it looks like nothing is happening but we can notice a very low frame rate because Excel is obviously rendering all the grids, cells, and so on. Let's back in design mode by pressing the stop game button. To get better performance, we can open the settings worksheet and hide grid lines and unused cells outside the game screen area. So the game is now refreshed with incredible 30 frames per second. As a warm up for the real stuff, I opened the declaration module and changed the screen color to dark gray. Then I finally started with game development, by refreshing the screen, and rendering the game scene. So the sides of the cave are currently shown by two white rectangles. To control transitions between different game states, I implemented a state machine. Depending on the current state, the update method restarts the game, performs the game logic, and handles the game over state. Each state also calls the rendering routine, which now draws two gray rectangles. Then I drew a bat sprite using the amazing Excel pixel editor, and after loading it into the game, I displayed it on the screen. Next I defined gravity and the vertical velocity of the bat, so that the bat is now falling freely under the action of gravity. To control the bat, I instantiated the spacebar key, and handled it in the gameplay logic. To make a flying animation of the bat, I drew three more frames of the bat sprite, and implemented a changing of its current frame in each cycle. Now it was time to make the sides of the cave more natural, to look like rock and stalactite obstacles. So I defined two arrays representing the ceiling and floor of the cave divided into segments, where each segment has a different height. Instead of showing cave sides with rectangles, now I used lines to draw each segment separately. Then I implemented a scrolling mechanism, where each cave segment is moved to the left, and a new segment is generated at the rightmost position. Here I used the clamp function to limit the height of the new segments, ensuring that there is always a free passage through the cave. In the next step, I implemented a collision detection system. So if any opaque pixel of the bat overlaps any side of the cave, the game is over. Since the bat should look more deadly when it hits obstacles, I drew one more sprite of a dead bat, and showed it when the game is over. Now it was time to add a scoring system, so I defined a travel distance variable, and increment it every cycle. Since every top game has a title screen, I added one to this game as well, to be displayed when the game is stopped or destroyed. To notify the player that the game is over, I added a game over dialog, declared its reference variable, and set the dialog properties. 
The dialogue is hidden until the game is over, and it will appear after the killed bat falls off the screen. Once the game over dialogue is displayed, the player can restart the game by pressing the spacebar. To make the game even more professional, I added a scoreboard so that the best scores can be saved forever. Now it was also possible to inform the player how good is his score, by showing his position on the scoreboard. Having the scoreboard, I could fetch the highest score, and print it on the head-up display when the game is created or completed. To make this game even more enjoyable, I added amazing sound effects of flying, and hitting obstacles. Finally, instead of this boring title screen, I designed a nice new title screen with brief instructions. Let's check it out. So with the title screen created, the game is now complete and fully playable. If you would like to play it, the download link is in the description below. So, thanks for watching this video, I hope you found it interesting. And if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, to stay up to date with the latest content on this channel. I would also love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks again for your support, and see you in the next video. Bye.